Good evening and welcome. We are streaming live from Gethsemane Lutheran Church to celebrate Maundy Thursday. And we wish to acknowledge and we honor the Osage, the Kwapa, the Miamia, the Ochete Shakawi, the Council of Seven Fires, the Kaskaskia, and the Kickapoo's people upon whose ancestral homelands we gather for worship, as well as all of our indigenous siblings who have and continue to care for this place, this land, and call it their home. And we welcome all of our guests here and watching us via the live stream. As mentioned, we celebrate today, Monday, Thursday, the beginning of Triduum. Please stand as you are comfortable. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism within the community of the church. God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor and enter the Paschal celebration reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. So we sing the opening hymn. You're invited to come forward and kneel at the altar rail to receive individual words of absolution along with the laying on of hands. A reminder that the promise of God's forgiveness is for you. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people, and in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life in faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading comes from Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household, if a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and the animals, on all, the God, on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you. On the houses where you live, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. to my supplications. 
The second reading comes from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after, also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right for that's what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. When you're invited to a dinner party, how do you expect to be treated? You probably want to be warmly greeted at the door 
may be welcomed with a refreshing beverage and given a seat at the table. You'll respond, of course, with absolutely impeccable manners on your very best behavior. You won't kick your shoes off under the table or rest your elbows on the tabletop or slurp your drink or gobble your food. You'll compliment the host on the meal. And at the end of a pleasant evening, you'll expect to depart with a promise to invite the host over to your home next time. Because that's how relationships are supposed to work. Reciprocity. There should be equal giving and receiving. Jesus, it turns out, is the worst kind of host for a polite dinner party. The disciples show up with their expectations about how things are supposed to go at this possible Passover Seder meal, which, by the way, the Gospels do not all agree that Jesus' last meal with his disciples is a ritual Passover meal. By the time Paul is writing his letters about believers and their faith rituals, as we read just a few moments ago, Paul does not mention that the Last Supper is a Passover meal. And all this is fine. Passover rituals can belong to the Jewish faith. Christians can respect this without copying or modifying a sacred Jewish ritual. But in any case, the disciples understand what a meal together should look like. So they're probably expecting their leader, Jesus, to eat with them and give them instructions about what comes next in their movement. They know Jesus is upsetting people with his miracles. They know there are angry leaders out there ready to send Jesus to his death. These disciples believe that they are ready to die with Jesus. Some of them even say so. Jesus is hosting this dinner and the disciples expect they'll repay his kindness by being there for him. And if he dies, well, then they'll assume leadership to keep the movement alive. Isn't this the way power is supposed to work? But instead of explaining to his disciples who should be in charge after he's gone, Jesus gets up from the table, strips off his outer robe, ties a towel around his waist, does all these things like a common slave would do. It's almost as though Jesus doesn't understand power at all. He doesn't understand what it means to have a succession plan. He doesn't even understand politeness as a dinner party host. In their culture, everyone would have known that hospitality demanded a basin of water to provide to guests when they arrive so they could wash their own feet as they enter a host's home. If anyone was going to wash the guest's feet, it would be a slave, a servant. No host would stoop down to wash the feet of their guests. No free person would get on the floor to wash the feet of another free person. This is scandalous behavior, practically rude. Peter declines this extravagant display of servitude, but Jesus refuses to let him get away with having dirty feet. Jesus tells him, you don't understand now, but you'll get it later. And Jesus proceeds to get up in the business of every disciple. Up in the business of their private, shame-filled, calloused feet. He sees their warts, their cracked heels, the dirt caked under their toenails, and he washes it away. And he does this dutifully and lovingly. For each one of the disciples, even Judas, all the while giving them just one job, love one another. So much for a sophisticated succession plan. This is the legacy Jesus really wants to leave? 2,000 years later, we still can't understand why Jesus washes feet. We still have trouble serving one another. We can barely love one another. You don't need me to list all the ways we fall short of glory and hurt each other, all the reasons why we should feel guilty and beg for God's forgiveness. You don't need a list of reasons why you should wash other people's feet. 
but I do have one question for you. When will Jesus wash your feet? To be a disciple of Jesus, having your feet washed apparently is not optional. Every disciple at the table has their feet washed whether they want it or not. Sure, it's humbling, maybe even embarrassing, but it is also world-changing and transformative. Jesus gets into our personal space. He meets us where we are terribly vulnerable. And Jesus honors what is sacred. He does not exploit our weakness or laugh at us when we're nervous. Jesus remains steadfast, teaching this powerful lesson about love by showing us exactly what love looks like, down on the ground, bowing before you, serving because this is the only way that love is stronger than evil. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to have your own feet washed, too, as part of this worship on Maundy Thursday. It isn't often that we literally repeat Jesus' words and actions in the same way he taught his disciples. But human wisdom, in all this time, has not found a way to improve upon Christ's action. You can decide for yourself if you are called to this experience or not, a truly bold leader might chase you down, as Jesus insisted upon washing the feet of his disciples. But for tonight, you get to choose. The only thing I ask is that you respond to this invitation with honesty. For Christ's sake, don't lie. Don't condescend to our Lord by refusing to have your feet washed out of modesty. I don't let anyone see my feet. Don't call it humility. Oh, but my feet are so ugly. Don't call it embarrassment. What if someone sees my unpolished toenails or the fuzz between my toes that came from my socks? Don't tell Jesus that you're just too practical. I can't get my feet washed because I'm wearing pantyhose. Don't call it strength either. I can wash my own feet, thank you very much. Don't tell Jesus that you're too spiritual for such an action. I'm already baptized. Why do I need my feet washed too? And don't even call it compassion. My feet are so gross that I love my neighbor too much to let them touch my feet. If you're going to refuse to let Jesus wash your feet, be honest with Jesus about the reason why. And call it what it is, disobedience. Jesus came to serve you, and you didn't let him because you were too ashamed. Jesus came to heal, and you didn't want to admit that you needed healing. Jesus came to teach, and you didn't learn because you resent being told what to do, even by Jesus. Jesus came to feed you, and you denied that you were hungry. Jesus came to die, and you were busy trying to figure out what stuff of his you would get after he's gone. Jesus comes to wash your feet, and what will you do now? Maybe you weren't prepared for this, but here you are, and here is Jesus. Pray for the grace to accept Christ's extravagant love. Pray for the grace to become obedient to Christ's will. Maybe it's time to get over yourself. Maybe this isn't really about you at all. Maybe this love really does begin and end with Jesus. And maybe this really is Christ's legacy. When will Jesus wash your feet? Amen. On this night, we have heard our Lord's commandment to love one another as he has loved us. 
We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. Foot washing, of course, is an invitation to you. The only command of Jesus is to love one another. And that's the Maundy part of Maundy Thursday, why we call this Maundy Thursday, from the Latin word mandatum, which means command. So you may come forward to have your feet washed, or you may adapt by having your hands washed, or maybe you choose to come to a kneeling rail to pray in silence. Our commitment to Christ's loving service is signified in the washing of feet, following the example our Lord gave us on the night before his death, where charity and love are found, there is God. Amen.
Let us pray. Rise as you may. Trusting in Jesus who gave his life for the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God, God who blesses the grains and the soil and the fruit of the vine, inspire in us a reverent care of the earth. Sustain fields, gardens, and wild places that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, whose greatest commandment is to love. Guide all who govern by the principle of love. Transform unjust human systems that oppress some for the gain of others. Restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who was betrayed, comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of exploitation. Help anyone in pain to know 
that you are near, especially Deanna, Stephen, the Crotty family, Mark, Sue, Mike, Natalie and her family, Damien, Neil, Barb, Conrad, Sharon, and the family of Sharon, and those we name before you now either silently in our hearts or spoken from our lips. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God who brings new life out of death, we pray with thanks for the lives of those who have joined the communion of the saints, especially Sharon, Susan, and Dennis. In our holy meal, connect us to the faithful who have gone before us and nourish us as your people living today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, O loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. stand as you are comfortable. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into Communion is served by intinction, which means that you'll receive bread as you come forward, as directed by the ushers, and then you may dip your bread, which is gluten-free, into one of the chalices. The chalice nearest to the bread contains wine, and the chalice on the end is filled with grape juice. So if this is too confusing, or if you forget what to do, be assured that God's grace covers over us, and Christ is the host of this meal. Now receive bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come, you may be seated for the meal.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back in its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest me not, and in the night season I am not silent. But thou art holy, O oh, that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted thee, they trust in thee, and thou did deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm, no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All oh, they that laugh at me to scorn, they shoot out lips and they shake their heads, saying, She trusted on the Lord, he will deliver her. Let him deliver her, seeing he is in her. But thou art he that took me out of my womb, thou didst make me home. When I was upon my mother's breast, I was cast down upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God, from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. For there is none to help 
Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls all in Bashan have beset me round. They caped upon me with their mouths as ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melting in the midst of my mouth. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue leaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. O oh, dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They part my garments among them and cast lots for my vesture. But be thou not far from me, O Lord. Oh, my strength. Hey. soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog, save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will praise thee, I will praise thee, I will praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye lost seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him, all the seed of Israel. nor abhor this affliction of the afflicted, neither hath it his face from him when he cried unto him. He heard my praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord and see him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindred of the nation shall worship before kingdom in the Lord, and he is the governor among the nations. All that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him, it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people shall be born. That he hath done this.